Tonight's number is two billion. That's we, a big number. Yeah, that's a big number. And <laughs> you're not gonna like this number, Tamara. Um, so a recent study came out from the World Health Organization, which offered a pretty staggering statistic. Two billion people in the world are currently drinking contaminated water. What kind of contamination, you may ask? Feces. That's right, two million people. Two billion people, rather. Um, now, the implications of this are obviously staggering. Dramatic improvements are needed in ensuring access to clean water and sanitation due to the fact that nearly two billion people are currently using fecal contaminated water. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year because they're forced to drink contaminated water, urging large investments to help people provide universal access to safe water. So this is coming from a report at the World Health Organization, which keeps track of these kind of things. Um, and this just points to a larger problem that ties right into some of the things that Tamara and I like to talk about here on the show, such as climate change. Yep. Um, we are going to see, as time goes on, this problem get worse, right? We're gonna see a situation where as water dries up in certain, you know, critical areas throughout the world, especially, you know, in underdeveloped nations, you're gonna have a problem where more people are gonna be drinking contaminated water. What yeah. do you think, Tamara? What's your solution? Can you just solve this for us? I cannot, but I think I think awareness is the first solution. I know personally I have come into contact with this recently in a weird way. Mm. So in DC, on Rock Creek Parkway, there's Rock Creek, and they have little signs all across along Rock Creek that say, during an influx of water, so high rainfall, the actual sewer systems will flow into this body of water. Huh. Just I because didn't, they're incorrectly made. No, they're not new signs. Oh and my God. So that is kind of eye-opening to think that this exists in this way. And yes, this is a different thing than I think um, what we're referring to in this um, actual article. But at the same time, it kind of raised awareness in myself where I was like, this is disgusting. I don't want to be out here when it rains a lot because I don't want to even imagine what it smells like or what goes on in this water source. I mean, that okay, so if you don't live in D.C., uh, Rock Creek Park and Rock Creek um, runs through, this, the district is basically shaped like uh, a diamond, mm -hmm. like this, and Rock Creek Park runs right through the middle of it. Um, there's roads on it uh, that you can drive or bike up and down. Um, but, you know, this is like the kind of the natural centerpiece of Washington, D.C. And when you're out there and you're hiking or you're jogging or you're biking or whatever, I mean, in my opinion, that water looks like pretty nice. Like, yeah. I would almost be tempted to go and just slurp up some no. of that. No, but apparently. Don't do it. Don't do it. I. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. at the same time, I think it's awareness. At the same, we are living in a place where we are lucky enough to have clean water, unlike lots of other places in the world, let alone other places in the United States. Shout out to Flint, Michigan, even though nice. they're in a horrible position right now. And, um, but I think we are putting more plastic in our products that is in turn recycling into our water sources like we talked about earlier this year with the actual little beads that they're starting to put in like facial washes and things like that to exfoliate more deeply. And when you do that, you're polluting in a way your water source because when we filter this water or when we try to make it into something that's drinkable, it can't really filter everything out or it clogs up the filtration systems. Not every place in the world has these filtration systems, and when we are recycling this plastic back into the water sources that are more generally populated, like the ocean, the Chesapeake Bay, and mm. a more geographic location to us, it eventually makes its way to other places around the world or just bothers the actual environment, I guess, balance in and of itself. So. You have to keep in mind what we're doing here when we involve plastics in our life and when we are involving a lot of pollution into the environment in many different ways. And it all comes back to one thing, and that is water in a huge way. Yep, it's all water. And and listen, the, you know, to the two billion people right now who are living with this contaminated situation, I mean, the effects of drinking feces contaminated water are nothing to scoff at. No. Um, Risk of contracting cholera is one option, dysentery, typhoid, and polio. Um, it causes over half a million deaths each year, and is a major, major factor in several neglected tropical diseases. Um, so 
what can we do about this? Um, there are a couple ways that you can tackle it. From an infrastructure standpoint, you can start to think about um, what are the structures in place and the way that you know your town or your society is structured. And I mean, this isn't really relevant to the United States, but in the developing world, um, how do you have proper sanitation things in place? Um, how do you have you know a system where you're making sure that either your livestock or your, your bathrooms aren't contaminating your water. And if none of those things are an option, there are some technologies that are slowly becoming available and rolled out to the developing world. Um, the, most, the most obvious one that points out that uh, I think of, I don't know if you've seen this before, Tamara, it's called the life straw. So the life straw is actually um, a tube and it just looks like a big straw. And you can actually stick this life straw into the most disgusting water you can imagine like you know i don't know imagine like what pigs are standing in or something and you stick that straw in there and you drink and uh, it filters out like 99.9 percent .9 of contaminants um which you know as long as the costs are low enough or there's development money behind it you know we can start sending products out like these to to places where you know lives are straight up being lost because yeah. of this contamination yeah, and I think that needs to be a bigger conversation that we have. Just because it isn't our problem necessarily doesn't mean it isn't a problem that we need to be aware of and doing something about. And I think that's a huge thing is a lot of people think, oh, it doesn't bother me as I water my entire front yard at noon and right. just do whatever. I mean, we, wa we water our front yards with clean drinking water, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty astounding to me. Yeah. So just if you are going to do things like that, keep in mind that there is a whole other place in this universe that you do not think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times just the way that, you know, the town's set up or the way that it's structured, you know, people go to the bathroom in the same water that they drink. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whether it's a lack of um, education about proper sanitation procedures, whether it's just the only option, whether it's cultural. I mean, these are all things that we need to keep an eye on because two billion people out of the entire human population on the planet yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's insane. So anyway, folks, that's the first segment of the show. We are coming back on The Fowler Show with more stories. Um, no Trump Tuesday is what we're calling this, even though it's Thursday. <laughs> um, and stay tuned. We'll be back.